All right, so today we're doing a little more pressure testing for those people who are interested in seeing these private videos. Um, we're working on knife defense and knife disarming techniques. Never recommend you actually try to disarm a knife in real life. Create distance, run away, find a weapon because uh, knife disarming really sucks. And we have been practicing some techniques that are higher probability than others. And I'm gonna go over that specific technique setup with you today. So here it is. Okay, so the scenario breakdown is gonna go like this. I see somebody, as soon as I see somebody deploying a weapon, I'm gonna reach over here and try to stuff that hand to prevent them from attacking me with it. Okay, so if he gets engaged with this knife and starts sewing machine, doing the sewing machine and slashing and stuff, it's gonna be way harder once this starts moving to try to grab it or control it than when he's here deploying it, okay? Because with a knife, you don't need to gain a lot of movement to get a lot of energy and a lot of damage. With just small moves, you can do a lot of damage with a knife. So, first I'm gonna reach out, get control of this hand. I'm gonna then double up on it with both hands and control this arm completely. One thing I wanna think about here, when I get my hands on it, I want my arms at outside of 90 degrees. I don't want them in too close and bent too much because I'll be getting a knife thrust into me. It's a weak position. And also if I have them extended all the way out as far as they can go and he pulls back real hard, it slips away. Whereas if I have my arms just a little bit bent here, it's a little bit springy. Go ahead. It's a little bit springy and my body, because this is this natural spring, my body naturally can move with it. Okay, once I get this position, another thing I want to think about is bringing my hands down low towards his hands. It's harder for him to switch hands this way. So if he's trying to switch hands, he's got to reach in between my hands first. Okay, whereas if I have my hands up here, it's too easy for him. Okay, this isn't going to entirely prevent him from switching hands, but it's going to increase the chances, and it's going to, increase the, it's going to decrease the probability he'll switch. Okay, next thing I want to do though, is bring my body in between his hands so he can't switch and bring my head where he can't just punch my lights out. If I'm out here, he's gonna knock me out, no problem. Okay, so as soon as I get here, I wanna come in like this. In real life, I'm gonna be throwing headbutts, knees to the groin, right? And I'm gonna close this distance with my body, he can't. This way, I'm keeping my head, let's turn it around. I'm keeping my head where he can't punch my head and knock me out. The other thing I'm doing is I'm keeping him blind to his knife, so it's gonna be a lot harder for him to reach across and grab it, he's gonna reach across my body, okay? Now, I can't stay here forever, so what I really wanna do, let's turn around, is when I get, when I get a moment, I wanna pull this around like so, okay? Another thing to be cognizant of in this position is this harm. He's going to be, once you get here sometimes, he'll still try to reach across and grab that weapon. You need to be ready to trap this hand to prevent him from switching hands. Switching hands is something you don't want to happen. From here, you can still take him down with one arm, okay? Just using this energy here, okay? Right in front. I'm going to step in front of him to tri trip him, okay? I'm going to grab his bicep tight like this, okay? Now, there's two ways. One, his arm could be bent like this. Okay, and in most cases his arm will be bent like this, but from here his arm is in a position, it's in one of the three, there's three ways you can bend the arm. You can do a bent arm lock this way, this way, or you can do a straight arm lock. This position here is what we would call like a key lock or Americana type of lock. It's locking the shoulder, okay. I'm hanging on tight here, hanging on tight here, pushing my chest into it, and from here, or if I have it this way, it's a straight arm lock. It's almost the same either way though. Tight and pull and push my chest out. And then from here, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm stepping backwards and dropping my knee down. Okay? So from this position right here, there's several ways I can disarm this knife. One thing I can do is I can switch my arm here, sit out into this position, driving my weight back. Okay? I drive my weight into the shoulders I put him in a straight arm lock. I can also put a wrist lock on top of that to gain control, take the knife away. Okay? 
And this is a Hapkido technique right here. Now, from here, you have a straight arm lock here. You have a gooseneck on top of it. And if you get, if you lose the straight arm lock, you also, putting pressure forward, you also have a shoulder lock. Okay, now, if you can't get any of those locks, and he's still got this knife in his hand, and I can't achieve any of those locks, one thing I can do is I can, if I have a hard surface here, I can grab his hand, and I can drive that knife point into the ground, pushing the knife out of his hand. Okay, if this is the concrete, and he's got a solid knife, I can grab this, I can drive into the ground really hard, get the knife out of his hand, and take it away.